Hello, I am Scorp, and today I am asking the question, should you overclock your Radeon 6700 XT? And the short answer is no, you should underclock it. And this is the settings that I have chosen. I, I hope you can see them okay. But basically, I have come into the Adrenaline software, and I've come to the performance and tuning, and I've changed the default tuning settings to custom. And from here, I've enabled uh, smart access memory, which you also have to enable in your BIOS, probably. And I have set a maximum frequency of 2550 and a max voltage of 1090 micro volts. And I've changed the fan curve just so it's a little quieter and increased the memory and increased the fast timing. I have also increased the power limit by 15%. So these settings will basically give you the same performance as the stock settings, except you will be running a lot quieter. You will be using less power and also you will not be running at as high a temperature. The considerable drops in all scenarios with either zero to negligible frame rate difference. I will also show you overclocked and see what performance you can get if you do want to overclock, but please do change your settings from the stock settings. So these are my settings for my overclock, and basically I increased the max frequency to 2850. I did decrease the voltage slightly to 1175, just because uh, the heat was unbearable when it was set to 1200. Uh, overclocked the RAM and set it to fast timing and also I've changed the fan curve to be far more aggressive because it does get very hot and also I have put the power limit up by 15%. So I play all my games at ultra wide settings 3440 by 1440 that's a 21 by 9 aspect ratio and here in Assassin's Creed on ultra settings at the stock configuration I get an average of 68 frames per second using 185 watts on the GPU. And this runs quite toasty at 78 degrees, 100 degrees on the junction and the fans not really ramping up at the stock settings. By overclocking I have managed to increase the frame rate by 9% and also increase the power consumption by 3% but also the temperatures have dropped considerably with the new fan curve that I have entered and also the slight undervolt I'm using to maintain this overclock. With my undervolt settings I am basically getting the same performance but I am using 27% less power and the fan is pretty quiet. It is a hell of a lot more quiet than it used to be and also the temperatures are much better. I also tried overclocking with PBO enabled, that is a CPU auto overclock and basically I didn't see much of a difference. There was more power consumption on the GPU strangely. I'm not sure if this comes from the overclocked CPU settings or if there was something else happening in the background but there it is for reference. Moving on to the next game, World War Z. Stock settings, I was getting an average of 129 frames per second, again using 185 watts on the GPU. Overclocking this increased the average by 8% and also increased the power consumption by 8%, so that's a nice linear scale. By undervolting, I basically achieved the same average frame rate, but I reduced the power consumption by 22% and temperatures and fan speed, again, a lot lower and a lot quieter. So I won't be showing the full benchmarks this time but if you want to see the full benchmarks there will be a link in the description and there should be a notification in the top right hand corner. In Borderlands 3 at stock settings I was getting an average of 69 frames per second. Overclocking this increased the frame rate by 7% but also increased the power consumption by 14%. Underclocking again gave me the same average frame rate with a minus 22% power draw. I also tried the same stock settings but with just the VRAM overclocked and basically it was exactly the same as the other three results. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider my average frame rate was 89 frames per second. Overclocking this increased the frame rate by 8% and also increased the power draw by 16%. Underclocking this, again, was the same average frame rate, but with 16% less power draw. 
I also tried undervolting with a CPU overclock with power boost enabled and 200 megahertz added to the CPU, which basically didn't change anything at all, other than I think the power consumption was a little more on the CPU, but not noticeably more. So all of these tests are pretty academic really, as I actually run all my games with a 72 FPS cap, because this is where my FreeSync window sort of plays up, if anything above that, and I get lots of screen tearing. So I cap at 72 frames per second, and my FreeSync range is between 35 and 72. So if you're like me and you're capping your frame rate, does it really matter anyway? Well, it turns out it does. If you were to run at stock settings on Shadow of the Tomb Raider with a 72 FPS cap, you would be using 5% less power draw. But if you were using my overclock settings with that very slight undervolt, then you would be using 8% less power than uncapped. And if you use my undervolt settings, you'll be using 30% less power. And all these three scenarios produce a very stable 72 frames per second. So yeah, undervolting is definitely worth it. For one, save a little bit of power, put less stress on your GPU, the fans are a lot quieter, the temperatures are a lot lower. Out of all the games tested, World War Z is the game that runs at the highest frame rate, so capping this does really reduce the power consumption. If you're overclocking and set a 72 FPS max, then you will see a 35% reduction in your power consumption. If you are running at stock, you will see a 32% reduction in your power consumption. And if you undervolt, you will be seeing an almost 50% reduction compared to the stock uncapped <laughs> settings. So basically, in conclusion, the stock settings on your Radeon GPU probably suck, quite honestly. So I would highly recommend, if you are someone who wants to push the boat out, do indeed overclock, but do try experimenting with dropping the voltage as well. You will probably see that the power consumption uncapped is higher, but the power consumption when you do cap to your monitor's frame rate or refresh rate, then it will probably be slightly lower than stock. But seeing as you're not pushing your frames to the max anyway, it is definitely worth going for the extreme sort of undervolt. Like I said, I managed to drop mine down to 1090 microvolts. You might be able to go further, you might not be able to go further. So do experiment and make sure that your game is stable. I've run this test quite a few times now on f what's it, four different games. I've run Time Spy quite a few times and this setting for me is completely stable so far. Um, there were other situations when I was running overclocked that I had the microvolts set to the maximum of 1200 and that ran completely fine in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Assassin's Creed and World War Z. But when I tried Borderlands, the junction temperature was around 110 degrees <laughs> and that was basically causing some thermal throttling and uh, the results were horrible. This is why I dropped the voltage down by... 0.25 so yes please change your stock settings change your fan curve and choose between undervolting and overclocking i would i would say for now undervolting is the way to go and I, I don't know if this is the same on nvidia gpus on an nvidia gpus i've always found that there's always been headroom to go further but it seems that the the thing to do with radio gpus is to go backwards so i hope that helps some people out and uh Catch you next time.